Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk about vectors, matrices and similar linear stuff. And today's part 50 is another video about the determinant, namely today we talk about the Gaussian elimination for determinants. This is an important topic for calculation reasons, because the Gaussian elimination for calculating determinants is much more efficient than the Laplace expansion. Of course, this gets very relevant if you have large matrices where you have to calculate the determinant of and you want to do that with the computer. But also, if you only work with pen and paper, the Gaussian elimination combined with the Laplace expansion can save you a lot of time in calculations. However, of course you already know, before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube, via PayPal or by other means. And moreover, don't forget to download the PDF version and the quiz for this video with the link in the description. Ok, then let's start with the topic of today, first by using a fact from the last video. Namely, we want the multiplication rule for the determinant. Which simply tells us that for a product of two matrices, we can simply pull out the multiplication symbol. So more precisely, the determinant of a product is the product of two determinants. This is such an important formula that you definitely should remember it. Now, on the other hand, we know that the Gaussian elimination is given by row operations for a matrix. It means that you start with a matrix A, then you do row operations and you get a new matrix out. And now the thing is that these row operations can be described by a multiplication of a matrix M from the left. In other words, we just have to know how the matrix M looks like for different row operations. And indeed, we have already discussed that in all detail in part 37. And now the question is, what do we know about the determinant of such a matrix M, because that's what we need to calculate the whole determinant here. So in order to understand that, let's look at some simple row operations again. Ok, for example, here you see we have three rows, and now we have the common case that we want to add multiples of one row to another row. So we could add lambda times the first row to the third row. Hence, we don't change the first and the second row, but the third row will look like this then. And now we have learned that we can rewrite this as a matrix product. So we just have to multiply the correct matrix from the left here. And now please recall, it's a 3 times 3 matrix, which looks like this. And if you look back at part 37, you might see there we have called it Z. Now, this is all not so important. The important part is that all these matrices here always have a triangular structure. And moreover, they have only ones at the diagonal. In other words, we can use the last video and conclude that the determinant of Z is simply 1. And therefore we can conclude, using our multiplication rule here, that adding rows in this sense does not change the determinant of A at all. This is a very nice result, because it allows us to simplify the matrix A inside the determinant. Ok, but at this point you might ask, what happens if we use the row operations given as exchanging rows? This is also something we have used and learned in the Gaussian elimination and we have called these matrices P. Now this is not so complicated to answer, because you can simply calculate the determinant of such a matrix P. And this is not so hard, because it has a lot of zeros and then it turns out it's always minus 1. And since this determinant is minus 1, it would mean we change the sign of our determinant in the calculation. In other words, if you do a row exchange, you have to do a flip in the sign of the determinant. So also not so complicated, but now something you have to keep in mind while doing the calculation. And then finally, you also know sometimes in the Gaussian elimination, we have to scale rows as well. So let's say here, we only scale one row by a factor dj. And now this is not a surprise, by our multiplication rule from above, we know that we will also scale the determinant by the same factor. However, here please keep in mind, if you scale another row by the same factor, 
you also have to scale the determinant again by the same factor. Indeed, this is sometimes forgotten because if you scale all the rows at once with the same factor, you have to scale the determinant by a power of this factor. And of course, this power is exactly the number of rows you have scaled. Okay, and with that, I would say you have all the rules how you can use the Gaussian elimination to calculate a determinant of a matrix. And now at this point, you might ask, can we also do column operations when we want to calculate a determinant? Usually, in the Gaussian elimination, we will not do column operations because we don't want to change the kernel of the given matrix. This is because we want to solve a system of linear equations, so the kernel gives us the solution in the end. And indeed, the row operations will not change this kernel, however, column operations will do. However, for calculating determinants, this is not so important, because we are not interested in the kernel, but in the determinant. And indeed, because of the fact that the determinant of the transpose is the same as the determinant of the original matrix, we can do column operations. Simply because column operations in A would be just row operations in AT. In other words, all the things from above also hold if you write columns instead of rows. So in other words, column operations for the determinant are now also allowed. Okay, and with all that, I would say let's go for an example. So let's do a nice calculation of a 5 times 5 determinant. So we have a very big matrix where we now want to combine the Gaussian elimination with the Laplace expansion. And in the end, we want to have the determinant of this matrix. So here's our 5 times 5 matrix with a lot of numbers. And now you already know, if we want to use the Laplace expansion, we would look at the row or the column with the most zeros. And in this case here, this would be the third column. There we have three zeros, but you would agree, it would be even nicer if we would have only one non-vanishing entry. And now you know we can do that by one step of the Gaussian elimination, because we can eliminate entries. In other words, here we could use the fifth row to eliminate the one in the second row. Hence, we would say, from the second row, we would subtract 1 times the fifth row. And of course, now we know this is an adding row operation, which will not change the determinant at all. So the second row here is changed, but not the determinant. So there is our new matrix, and then we see the third column is now perfect for the Laplace expansion. Therefore, this is now what we will do in the next step. And now please don't forget, for the Laplace expansion, we need the correct sign, so we need this checkerboard pattern again to see that we have a plus sign here for this entry. So we have the sign as plus and the entry as 1, times the determinant we get when we cross the corresponding column and the corresponding row. And with that, we have already reached a 4 times 4 matrix. And now I would say, to practice, let's use some column operations. Also, I want to do that because the factors 2 and 4 fit nicely together here. In other words, I want to use this last column here and add it to the third column and the second one. More precisely, we will subtract it 2 times from the second one. And of course, we can simply do that in one step. And again, the important thing here is that we don't multiply a given column or a given row, hence the whole determinant will not change at all. Therefore, we just have to write down what happens after this column operation. So you see, again not so complicated, the first column and the last column are not changed at all. And moreover, we have a very nice row here, where we can use the Laplace expansion again. And of course, we will not forget what the sign is here. So it's plus again, but now we should not forget about the factor 2 here. Okay, and as before, we only have one remaining determinant, which is now a 3 times 3 one. In other words, we have reduced the whole thing such that now we can use our rule of Saru. However, this one I will not present, because we have already discussed that in another video. But of course, I can tell you the solution, we get 13, so we have 2 times 13, which is 26 for the determinant. 
So this is the result for the determinant of the 5 times 5 matrix. And with that we have seen how we can use the Gaussian elimination to calculate determinants. Indeed, in general you could say use only the Gaussian elimination to bring the matrix into a triangular form. Because then the determinant of this triangular matrix is simply the product of the diagonal. In fact, this is something you would implement into a program for calculating determinants of big matrices. Just try to compare how many calculation steps do you need for the Gaussian elimination to work in comparison with the Laplace expansion or the Leibniz formula. Maybe try to write that down for a 10 times 10 matrix and you will immediately see the difference. Okay, I would say that's good enough for the calculation side here. In the next video we will go more abstract again. In other words, we will see what the determinant means for linear maps. Therefore, I really hope that I see you in the next video and have a nice day. Bye!